One of the mistakes I made early on that's considered bad practice is turning the whole card into a link. Whenever screen readers focus on this, they have to read all text and any image alt text inside this card. Also, it prevents us from having buttons inside for like a like button or anything else. And we can't add things like a component slot into this either when this is a link. Another thing we might need to do is use a button tag with the custom element if this card triggers an interaction or opens a modal, but button tags can't have divs inside of them, so we can't turn our whole card into a button tag either. So what most sites do is they actually keep the card being a div, and they have a position absolute link or button tag over the whole card. And this can be extended to actual button elements also that need to switch between being a link or an HTML button tag. It can just be an absolute thing inside of the button. So if we check out the way sites like Apple handle this, their content is separate from the actual button tag. Let's learn how to set this up in an accessible way. So let's open any component and we'll drop in a div and we'll give it the class of clickable wrap. Let's give this a position of absolute to cover its full parent. We'll give that Z index three so it's above any content and we'll give it a width and height of 100%. Now inside of this, let's drop in a link block and we'll go ahead and give this a class of clickable link. And we want this to be position absolute to cover the full parent. We want it to have 100% width and height as well. Now inside of the wrap, let's also drop in a custom element and we'll give this the class of clickable button we want that to be position absolute, just like the link to cover a full parent, 100% within height. And let's also under settings, give this element a tag of button. And what we'll notice is button elements have some default padding and they also have a default background color. So let's clear all that out and make the background transparent. Now, if we were to tab onto this button or link, we'll notice the uh, focus outline doesn't match the border radius of the element. Now to fix that, we can select the clickable wrap and under custom properties, we can add a border radius and we'll set a value of inherit so it receives from its parent. And on the link, we'll also add a border radius like so. And we'll go ahead and give this um, a value of inherit so that it receives from its parent, which is receiving from the entire element. And on the button tag, let's add that same border radius and give it the value inherit. So now what we should notice is if we tab onto the button or link, its focus outline matches the border radius of the parent. So now that we have that set, when we focus on a button or link, it needs to read some text associated with that element. And to do that, we could try setting an area label, something like learn more, but the problem is this text in the area label doesn't get translated to different languages. And we can't link this attribute value to the same field as the text because Webflow treats those as two separate field types. So what we're going to want to do instead is use some text inside of our button. Now button tags can't have a div inside them and this text block is just a div. So what we'll do instead is use a custom element and we'll give this a tag of span and then we can put any text we want in there. Now notice how the text is actually showing up here. And if we set its opacity to zero, screen readers wouldn't be able to read it. So instead, we're going to add an SR, screen reader only class. This means negative one pixel margin on all sides, zero pixel padding, one pixel width and height overflow hidden, position absolute, it gives a border width of zero, and a clip path. So this basically hides the text from us while still allowing screen readers to read it. And the good thing about this is we can link this text to a field like any other text element. So let's select the whole clickable wrap and let's turn this into a component called clickable. And now that we have that set, we can go ahead and select the span in here and link that to a field we'll call text. Let's copy that same text element and put it inside the link. So no matter if we're using a button tag or link tag, we'll still have text that's readable inside it. Let's select the whole clickable wrap and let's connect the visibility to a field in case we need to hide the whole component in the future. Now we're also gonna need to link the URL on this link to a field. And that way we can change that out as we please. Now, if the URL to this is empty, that means it just has this hashtag. Um, we'll just want to use a button tag instead because it's gonna trigger like a modal or an interaction. But if the URL is filled, meaning it's going to a page or a phone number, email, a section, or anything else, then we'll want to hide the button tag and show the link tag instead. So what we can do is set the link tag to display block by default. 
and we'll set the button tag to display none so it's hidden. So by default, we're using a link. And then let's copy the class on this whole parent and we'll go ahead and head over to our embed. So we can target that class and then we can find the A tag, the links inside of this clickable wrap and we'll find only the, the link that has an href with a value of pound, so just an empty link. And if there's an empty link inside this clickable wrap, we'll set that empty link to display none. When it's set to display none, screen readers can't focus on it or read it, so that's perfectly fine. Let's copy this whole thing, and then we'll want to set the button to display block. So inside our clickable wrap, we found the empty link, and we're going to target the sibling button that comes after that link, and we'll set that button to display block. And so now that we have that set, if our, um, if our link is empty, we'll be having the button tag, but if our link is filled, we'll be having the link tag. And that way that's dynamically set for us. Now we can go ahead and link this instance of the component text to the same field as our button text so that if we change out the text on this button, it will change the text here and also inside the screen reader only elements. And we don't want when a screen reader focuses on this wrap that it reads the same text twice. So to prevent that, we'll select this button text and under attributes, we'll add an area hidden and a value of true. So that'll make screen readers ignore the text that we're seeing and they'll just read the text that's inside of the link or button tag. Now that we have that set, let's link this URL to a field on the whole button component. And that way this button component can be pointed to go anywhere. And now that we have that, we can grab this card here. Let's go ahead and set that to a position of relative. And we'll go ahead and drop this clickable element inside. And that will make the whole card clickable. So it's just covering the whole card. And if we were to give that card um, a link here, if we would point it somewhere, then it's a link tag. If not, it's a button tag and it can open a modal or trigger an interaction. Now we might have like a favorite icon or different like maybe links inside of a rich text, different links that need to come on top of this absolute clickable element. Well, to do that, we can just select the div that holds maybe this button or any element and give it a Z index four. So it's just above the absolute clickable element. And that way we can have multiple clickable things inside one child if needed. And now that we have that set, we can also connect this text on this absolute card to the same text as the card title. So it matches the word branding here, or we could connect it to a different field on the card and do something more custom for each card, like learn more about our branding services or something more specific. And we can fill that in with whatever we want. So one other thing we might want to do is it could get a little uh, frustrating whenever we click into a component, not being able to click on the text underneath this absolute thing. And that can be hard whenever we're styling elements and stuff like that. So to fix it, let's just copy the class of this clickable wrap and we'll head over to our embed and we'll target the uh, WF uh, design mode class, which is a class Webflow adds to the entire HTML element whenever we're in design mode. And we're going to find the clickable wrap inside of that design mode. And we can either set it to pointer events none, or we can put it on a lower Z index. Um, anything we want to do there to make sure that it's out of the way when we're in design mode, we can easily click directly on the text and content we want to edit. We can still edit the actual URL of that link as soon as we point it uh, let's connect this uh, clickable element URL to a field called card link. That way on each card, we can still edit its URL like so, but we can easily just access this content. We can click on this. And as soon as we exit preview, now we can no longer click on the text and the absolute element takes the full forefront. So that's how to set up an accessible sort of clickable element that can be turned on or off. It can be a button or a link and how to use that in Webflow. There's tons of components like this that really focus on accessibility in Lumos. So if you haven't checked out the Lumos framework yet, I highly encourage you to do that because I'm constantly adding uh, things like this that focus on accessibility and making our lives easier.